On this Debaco University video, we'll be learning about what UV light is and looking at some data that it has on the impact on terpene production through this collaboration with Shane from Migro. Welcome again, Shane from uh, Migro. Here we are discussing uh, light in different wavelengths. Uh, we've talked about kind of in the middle, we've talked about PAR, we've talked about blue, red, uh, green wavelengths of light. Also have another video on far red, which is one end of the spectrum. Now we're gonna go to kind of the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, talking about UV light. Now with UV light, we've got the breakdown of UVA and UVB, and we're gonna kind of see, can we, ascertain anything about, you know, how it might affect uh, plant growth? How do plants kind of utilize um, these? Uh, kind of looking at that far end, you know, one spectrum, that far red. Well, now, does this have any counteracting effects? Or when we're looking at UV light, how may this change our morphology? Because we may see it in some lights that we're looking at purchasing. So Shane, looking at our uh, UVA, UVB lights, How's this impacting um, plant growth? What can growers kind of expect for these different wavelengths to impact their particular plants? Yeah, so UVA is um, lower wavelength than blue. It's really a, a deep blue, just about visible. Um, if you're to see a UVA LED, you might see a sort of a, a deep blue glow from it, mm -hmm. uh, but barely in the visible range. Um, UVA is um, emitted by the sun, uh, it's it's available to use by plants. Uh, it's somewhat photosynthetic, although not as a, as as photosynthetic as blue. Um, and as you go into the lower wavelengths, it becomes less photosynthetically active. Um, blue, in terms of plant response, sorry, UVA in terms of plant response, is very similar to blue, in that uh, increased proportions of UVA in the plant spectrum will um, lead to shorter, more dense growth up to a point. Um, UVA is, uh, is, is not considered to be beneficial in, in many other ways. There are studies uh, around, uh, theories abound, but I haven't seen any practical um, demonstration or experiments demonstrating that there's any other benefit of using UVA, UVA in terms of cannabis growth. Separately then, uh, UVB, which is lower down on the spectrum, UV or sorry, low, lower down in terms of wavelengths, shorter wavelength, but higher energy. Um, we know this because UVB causes um, sunburn. You know, it can, it, it has um, high energy photons, which can basically can damage um, cells. And so, in terms of our cells, we get sunburned. In terms of plants, um, it can reduce growth rate um, because um, it can damage the plants. Um, but it can also stimulate a response from the plants. There are theories that um, that UVB will contribute to increased oil production, the so-called sun, sunscreen response. Mm -hmm. um, there is some evidence to support this. So, for example, uh, if you talk to herb growers, you know that there's just considered to be a qualitative difference. And for example, rosemary, if it's grown in the sun rather than in a greenhouse, mm -hmm. you get a more pungent, sticky aroma um, and there are some studies uh, for very limited with, with regard to cannabis that you can get that effect also um, the theory being that you'd apply UVB to the plant when flowering and uh, as I said you get increased uh, not in cannabinoids uh, but an increase in uh, oil production which would be terpenes and flavonoids so uh, more flavor and taste. Yeah, and thanks for mentioning the uh, you know specifics of timing potentially of this and how that might be beneficial. Now, some manufacturers are producing specific lights for uh, UVB in particular. You know, as you mentioned, they you know more towards that end, that terpene, that final kind of finishing where it might be more important. Now, is this something growers should be filtering out maybe early in this in the season? Is something that you would look at modifying in any certain way? Any recommendations you would give to growers? Would you just use it at the end, and does it really matter? At the because we're looking at uh, blue light, UV light. Um, is this something growers should be concerned about the entire grow, or should it really be focused on in that later stages, if at all? Yeah, so UVB or UVA to start with is 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 produced um, is not produced by by grow lighting or a standard grow light. So mm -hmm. if we're using white LED lights, for example, even using metal halide and high pressure sodium, very limited output of UVA um, 
from, from those lighting technologies. Um, so, but some growers choose to supplement uh, that spectrum with, with perhaps UVA diodes. Um, and as I said, that might be, might be producing a small amount of UVA radiation. Um, and so it's, it's likely to contribute a little bit to photosynthesis, but unlikely to change the quality of the harvest that you get. And um, UVB and the, up, up, up to now has only really been available um, using fluorescence. Mm -hmm. So you think of your typical use would be in um, you know, sunbeds or um, reptile bulbs. Now, they are quite an efficient uh, source of UVB photons, uh, and they can be used as a supplemental light to your, to your LED light. Um, there is an improvement in the um, UVB uh, LED technology, mm -hmm. so they're becoming more efficient, they're becoming more cost effective. Um, and there are studies uh, that are underway. I know from speaking to, to uh, a college recently that they're looking at uh, discrete bands, uh, the, the effect of discrete bands of UVB uh, on the terpene profile, for example, for example, of plants. So there's plenty to be, to be looked at there. There's research to be done, and I'm sure there'll be um, learnings that will come out over the coming years. Thank you for giving us that little uh, teaser insight to what we might be seeing in the future. And the fact that just because we can produce it or can add it, it may not have necessary effects on plant growth. So it's kind of that technology versus morphology of the plant and kind of what the plant can actually utilize. Um, and this just kind of adds to our understanding of just what the plants can utilize, even though they might be exposed to a lot. And look forward to hearing uh, potentially on that research or those publications on what might be coming forward as we learn more about this particular wavelength there um, that the plants can be exposed to. Mm -hmm. Th thank you again, Shane, for uh, everything here and uh, further insight into our ever-expanding knowledge of the ever-expanding electromagnetic spectrum.